Hey guys, Joe Pajzinski here at Advanced Innovations. Welcome back to my shop. Thank you to all my new subscribers for signing on and thank you to everyone that continues to support this channel and leave me positive comments and feedback. Today's topic is more about threads. I'm going to go a little bit deeper and I'm going to clear up some details based on some comments and offline messages that I got. And if you want to try to keep it short and sweet, probably won't be going out to the machine, but everything's going to be on the board and I hope you get something out of this. All right, let's start with some thread basics. There's two kinds of threads. Actually, there's a bunch of different kinds of threads, but you have an A class and a B class. What's the difference? Easy way to remember it. You have an A thread or a B thread. An A thread is exposed to the air. It's an OD thread. A B thread is down inside of a board. I've always found that word association helps to remember things that are just maybe sometimes confusing, but A and B shouldn't be all that confusing. Now it really shouldn't be because A air, B bore. Simple. Okay. Classes of threads. If you go into a thread uh, section of your machinist handbook, you're going to see class 1A, 2A, 3A, 3B, 2A. I mean, what does this all mean, right? Well, think of it in terms of money, dollars, one, two, and three dollars. Which is going to be the most expensive thread? probably the more precision thread, right? So the $3 thread is going to be the more precision, the $2 is going to be eh, affordable, and the dollar thread is going to be cheap. So look at it that way. A class one thread is chances are what you're going to find at the local hardware store, in the bin, mass produced, whammed out, definitely in tolerance for a class one thread, but not something you're going to use as a gauge or for fine adjustments on something. Uh, industrial threads, many of industrial threads that you're going to find on blueprints are usually in the class 2 range and instrument threads, microscope threads, stuff like that will be in the class 3 range. So class 1, 2, and 3, easy. The more expensive, the more precision, class 3 is definitely, yeah, that covers these two. Wires. You know I'm a big fan of measuring threads with wires. There's a lot of different ways. I know a lot of guys use thread mics because when you drop them in your chip bin, they're easier to find than a wire. Pierre, that's for you, would. Uh, but pitch mics are thread specific. If you look at a pitch mic, at least the mics I've had, if anybody out there has a mic that does all the threads on the planet, by all means send me a catalog number and I'll buy one. But the thread mics are, are pitch specific, which means this one will do from an 8 to a 6 and this will be 32 to 40 and whatever and they're fairly expensive so unless you're a big shop with a big cash flow it's going to be tough to do that same thing with ring gauges but gauges are worth the money if you're going to do stuff like chrome plating powder coating anodizing and you're getting parts back from the field and you want to make sure that that thread on that part is still going to be good after that process get yourself some hard gauges or at least make a gauge don't use a nut don't use a bolt because that's just that makes me crazy. You've probably already figured that out. Wires are in sets of three. If you buy a set of wires, it's going to be, matter of fact, I got one right here. If you buy a set of wires, the wires are going to come in sets of three. And why is that? Because everybody says, oh, you need three wires to measure a thread. And you also need 12 hands because trying to keep those wires wrapped around that part and get your mic on there, you might as well be a contortionist because it gets kind of fussy unless you've done it 6,000 times and it's not so hard. But how many wires do you need to measure a thread? Let's take a look. There's your material. Just see if we can follow along here. We know the diameter, right? Because you can measure the diameter. When you have threads in the OD of that part, naturally because it's a helix, they don't line up. So when you put your wires in these threads, you have one here, one here, and one here. That's a three wire measurement for a thread to come up with a pitch diameter. Why three wires? Well, when you put your micrometer on there, you don't want your micrometer dancing around. So the top two wires establish a perpendicular relationship to the center line of that part and then the bottom one by construction of your instrument is parallel and you get a good reading. If you only had two, you wouldn't quite know where to finagle your micrometer and get a reading. 
Okay, so that's the three wire measurement right there. It's a triangle, piece of cake. Can you do it with two wires? Well, I just showed you you shouldn't, but you can. You have your OD of your part again. When you first start your thread, when you set all your compounds and slides and whatever to your finished location for your, for your dials, or in a piece of scrap, plunge your threading tool, get your groove, and now you can use two wires. One here, one here, because they're in line. Now, as with measuring any cylindrical object, you're going to have to find the high spot not only of the cylinder, but the high spot rotationally as well. So this is going to take a little more finesse with the micrometer to come up with your reading. But yes, two wires. Absolutely possible to measure the pitch diameter or the settings of your compounds and slides with two wires. Yes. All right, can you do it with one wire? You can absolutely do it with one wire, and I don't know why more people don't do it with one wire because it seems so, so dirt simple. Here's your part again. We're going to break it down a little bit further this time. You have multiple threads in that part. Both sides. Let's just say, okay, both sides. I'll draw both sides. That's pretty ugly, but nonetheless, it's there. What do we know about this part? We know the diameter, and if we know the diameter, then we know the radius. Given, right? Diameter divided by two, radius. Can you measure this thread with one wire? You put one wire in here and measure from here to here, you're going to come up with this value. Well, let's say you have that value would be x. Your x value minus your radius value equals the center line to the top of that ball value. Let's call it y. y times 2 equals your wire measurement. You can't argue about that. And it's so easy just to hold one wire and run it on. The OD of the part orients the micrometer flat because you're nice, you have a nice true diameter. So yes, one more time, the radius of the part is developed dimension because of the diameter, you know that. When you measure the whole part, the diameter and the pin, you subtract the radius value and it gives you your over the ball and then you just replicate that on the other side times two and there's your measurement diameter. From that point you just back out your pitch value and you're there. So yes you can. One wire as well. One, two, or three wires, not a problem. Just proved it. All right, I'm checking this off as we go. Pitch diameter. What is a pitch diameter? A pitch diameter is a diameter that you theoretically can't measure any other way other than with wires or a hard gauge or a comparator or an overlay but you really can't just grab a micrometer, standard micrometer, and measure it. A pitch diameter is a gauge point in the V of that thread to a gauge point on the flip side right there. That is where a pitch diameter is calculated. And if you could imagine a donut, a round ring that fits right in there, that fits not only over the external thread, but inside the internal thread, it's a common feature that assures both the external and internal threads are going to go together when cut correctly. So the pitch diameter is right in here somewhere in the profile of the thread. When you get a set of wires, a wire chart comes with those wires. And it looks something like this. 
And forgive me, I'm a big fan of wires, so I'm going to go for it right here. Wire chart. Gives you a multiple selection of pitches. And with each pitch value, it gives you an add number and a constant number. Now, when you go to the machinist handbook or your threading chart, you're going to have an allowance value, which is a decimal value gap between the largest external thread and the smallest internal thread. So it's the swap that you're allowed per class. And I think for class threes, most of them, there is no allowance. It could technically be a line fit, so that's why threes are so critical. You're going to have a major diameter. The major diameter is the OD of the thread. A one inch thread is not necessarily one inch allowable as a major diameter. I know this for a fact. It's 998 to 983. So these stay undersized for an external thread. A pitch diameter value. They're going to give you the pitch diameter value in the chart. And they're also going to give you a minor diameter based on a correct tip flap. And here's your minor diameter root diameter. Alright, how do you measure that? You, when you have your wires and you have all this information, what do you do with it? Well for, let's just say this is a 1 inch 8 external thread. So that would be a what? An A thread, right? Because it's air thread. 1 inch 8 2A thread. The wires that you use for a 1 inch 8 2A thread is an 072 diameter wire. So you would take your three, three wires, two wires, whatever wires you want to use. Don't use two wires on a real thread. You've got to use two wires on an undercut profile, not a real thread. And you lay your wires in here. Measure across your wires. And you come up with your measurement. What do you do with your measurement? Well, you go to that little chart that's in your pitch envelope called your constant. And the constant for a 1 inch 8 2A thread is 0 0.10775. So whatever this measurement was, you subtract the constant. And that equals the current PD of the part. Okay? Now you take whatever you just calculated against the PD in the book, the pitch diameter value from your chart, and you know how much more to cut off. You know where to stop, you know where to start, so you're golden. Uh, now there's also a value in there called an add value. The add value is usually a class 2 high end value that will say, okay I'm starting with a 1 inch thread and I have an 026 thousandths add value. So when I'm measuring over those wires, if I have 1 inch 026, I know I'm right in there somewhere and chances are you need to go a little bit smaller based on the class or the, the range of the class 2 thread. I'd leave that up there longer, but you can roll this video back and freeze frame it. And maybe get it, maybe not. Anyway, we covered pitch diameter. What is it? The constant from the wire chart the add from the wire chart. Let's say you're making an internal thread. Internal threads are a whole different animal. If you don't have a plug gauge for an internal thread, you might be in trouble. But, and I can't stress this enough, do not use hardware or the mating part to check an internal thread. If you're doing something for yourself, if you're repairing a lawnmower or a bicycle frame, or something within your own building that you'll always be able to get to the other part, then go ahead and do it. But if you're sending a part to the other side of the world to a guy who's anxiously awaiting to get his car back on the road or get his machine gun back together, and you don't use a gauge, well, it's just a crapshoot whether or not that part's going to fit when it gets where it's going. Gauges are for standards, and standards are for interchangeability. So make yourself a gauge. Let's talk about that. You have an internal thread. That internal thread would be a B-class thread. When you make a plug gauge to check a B-class thread, you're making an external thread, which is technically an A-class thread, but you must use the B-class pitch diameter for that plug gauge. 
or you're not going to accurately reflect the pitch diameter that's down inside that hole. I see a lot of guys say, okay, well, I'm going to make a 1 inch 8 plug gauge, and they use the 1 inch 8 2 A pitch, but good, you have a 1 inch 8 2 A pitch external thread, but it's not a plug gauge for a 2 B thread. You must use the B class pitch diameter on a thread gauge if you're checking a B class internal thread. Now, that might be confusing, listen to it a couple of times, but I've seen that mistake made a thousand times and it's a big problem, so don't do it. All right, went over the allowances, went over the gauge, PDs. Final thing, when you run a thread, especially an internal thread, here's the surface of the bore. As you cut that thread into that part, you are going to throw burrs back into that bore. And if you don't think you are, well then bore that thing out, bore your part out, get a nice precision fit on your plug gauge that goes in there, your cylindrical plug gauge, not your thread plug gauge. Run a couple of passes with your threading tool and try to put that plug gauge back in that hole. Just saying, highly unlikely that plug gauge is going to go back in that hole because you have burrs that are building up on your part because of the thread displacement from the cutting operation. So before you get all excited and say, oh, I think I'm going to try the mating part or I'm going to try the gauge. You have got to go back in here and you have got to wipe these off. Use emery, take a pass with a pouring bar, know what your contact point is with your threading tool, dial it out and put that on there and clean those high spots off with your threading tool. I've seen it done 10 different ways. But if you're running a right hand thread, do yourself a favor and put the machine in reverse so if you do stick your finger down in that hole, it doesn't suck you in and grind you up and uh, remove your fingernails and leave you with a nice eight pitch scar on your finger. I've seen that happen too. And I've also seen people's fingers turn completely around several times because the emery chokes it like a strap wrench and before you know it, it's broken 19 different ways. So be very careful if you put your fingers down inside of holes. It's a lot easier to split a wooden dowel, put the emery on the dowel, wrap it accordingly so it doesn't unwrap in the hole and stick that down in there and wipe those high spots off that thread. Naturally afterwards, take one more pass to clean the junk out of the roots of the threads, and then try your part. All right guys, well, I do have a couple more thread videos planned. I'm gonna do some internal threading. I'm gonna show you how I do it, because I do it a little differently, as would be obvious by the way I invert my tool and thread away from the chuck in some of my other threading videos. I hope you got something out of that. There's a lot of technical details if you want to do a gauge perfect thread. And uh, if you have any questions, post them in the comment line below. If you like what you just saw, give me a thumbs up. Subscribe, tell a friend, tell that friend to subscribe. That's all I got for you. Thank you for watching and thank you for your support. Joe Pyle, Advanced Innovations, Austin, Texas. I'm out.